Today I'm very excited that the sun decided to come out. Ooh, ooh, my batteries decided to die. Good one. But the sun's out, so I can recharge them. No problem. <laughs> oh, I spent the morning running around outside doing stuff. It was very nice to be out there with some sun and not just cold. Because, you know, it is the fall in Vermont. It's getting pretty cold out. So, yeah, I guess I have some giant roboting to do today. Whoa, it's so shiny in here. Hmm. So, last time I put these things on, and now I have to kind of lock down the rest of this slidey part. Because this is probably enough to keep it from moving, but, you know, I don't want some of these roller parts to rip off and the whole chunk to fly off, because that would kind of suck. So, I'm going to put some bolts in there, like one, two, three, four, and then four on the other side, so that's eight, and then times three is 24, so yeah, I'm going to be screwing, or drilling 24 holes, tapping them and putting bolts in. That'll be pretty exciting. Let's see here, I need a drill, some oil, box of forks, and there's some washers, lock washers. And right over here. And the right tap's still in. This is much easier without something in the way. That was for all the people who have informed me that I'm not using my taps right. Shush! Hmm. Oh, I think I forgot a tool! Do 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 over here over here Yes For anyone who doesn't know how to make threads in a hole, that's what tapping is, use this little tap thing and you stick it in your hole and, well, luckily you can slide that out of the way because sometimes it's a tight fit. Mm. Let's see, it's hard to do with one hand. You have to line it up real straight and kind of shove it in there a little bit. Now, going through the aluminum part here, it's very easy, so you can almost just go straight through. There, I think I got it grabbed there. And then you wiggle it back and forth a little bit every now and then. But with aluminum, it's so soft, you don't have to wiggle it back and forth much. Which is probably what people saw me doing when they said, You're not using your taps right! Because as soon as you get to the steel part, right about there, then you have to go back. So you do like half a turn and go, go back. And that kind of loosens up the stuff. So, and then crank it back for a second. And it'll keep you from snapping your tap. And it'll make them last a lot longer. And when you're done, just unscrew the sucker. I almost got it. Just hanging on by a thread, literally. All right, there. And you have to make sure you put lots of oil on your little tap there, or else it gets dull real fast. And you can get these to match just about any bolt, which is pretty sweet. And then you can stick your bolts in the hole. Sorry if that was redundant for some people, but that's very useful information for some people. I actually had to learn how to use taps on my own after breaking a few. 
Would have been nice if someone told me. It was sort of a funny conversation. I was like, hey dad, taps work a lot better if you go forward and then backwards a little bit and then go forward a little more and then back a little bit. He's like, oh yeah, that's how you use them. And I'm like, why didn't anyone tell me this? Well, that's a third of them. So I just drilled a bunch of holes with a drill bit that I broke yesterday. Here's the broken piece. And you don't have to throw them out once you break them. A lot of people do that. Uh, all you have to do is take your drill bit piece or a new drill bit if this piece is too small and you can see on the end, you won't be able to see on the camera that well, but there's flat surfaces that are where it was ground originally to sharpen it. And if you line those flat surfaces up on your grinder, you can see the angle that the drill bit is at to sharpen it. And then you can take your broken piece and match it up, and you might want to hold them both there at the same time, but match it up and then grind it there. And of course, it takes a little bit of eyeballing to get the point centered in the middle. But, yeah, with a little bit of practice, you should be able to sharpen them pretty easily. Oh, and after you grind it, dunk it in some water. That seems to help a little. Yeah, of course, if you don't have a grinder, this may be a little bit more difficult. I have been known to do it on sandpaper in a pinch, which is horribly tedious. But if you're in a place where you don't have anything else, it can be done. Okay, I'm removing these steel cable holders, which are not necessary at the moment. And I'm marking them on the side here. See, this is this has a one on it. And that has a one on it. So, that way, Jamie, you can remember where they go. And they're going right down here. You know what? I'm sitting here looking at this thing, and I think the, the other three legs, the three legs I haven't actually tested yet, might be strong enough. I think they are strong enough. So I'm just gonna go hand crank the motor. And if this foot picks up, I'm good. Ugh. I'm not sure if this is stupid or if I'm just being impatient. No, I don't think I'm just being impatient. I think it's good to go. Okay, let's see. Whoa. Nice, holy cow. Whoa. Oh great, someone's calling me right now. Oh. Hello?